Good morning. This is Daryl Peterson of Micromeasurements. I'm the Applications Engineering Manager. And this morning I'm visiting uh, Bruno Belanger of BCOM Testing. Uh, BCOM Testing has a long history involved with uh, composites testing, uh, doing a lot of the mechanical testing. And more recently, over the last uh, five to six years, maybe a little longer, uh, they've gotten involved more and more in strain gauge testing. And the reason I'm here is uh, I wanted to chat with Bruno for a few minutes about our upcoming uh, strain gauge workshop. Uh, we have a five-day composites class uh, that we're going to teach in June, and I wanted to take a few minutes and discuss it with uh, Bruno because he's going to be there to uh, help us. So he and I are going to take a look at the uh, course. It's actually a uh, five-day class. Uh, starts on Monday. And we're just going to kind of give you a feel for the kind of things that we're going to be talking about uh, during this class. That way, if you're interested in attending, you'll have a good feel for what uh, we're going to go over. So Bruno, welcome, and uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, chat with us for a few minutes. You're welcome. So we're going to get started and we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the schedule. So day one in the morning, our goal here really is to review strength materials. Uh, we'll spend uh, the better part of the morning going over some basic uh, relationships of stress and strain. Uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit about T rosettes and rectangular rosettes. We'll also look at some combined loading examples. We've got several examples that we put in a, in a tensile frame and we pull it and some of these you might be able to anticipate or calculate the results quite easily and others uh, not so much and we want to kind of illustrate that. And then in the afternoon on day one is really where we pick up the hands-on part of the workshop. We start our project number one which is a, a CEA series strain gauge installed with Mbond 200 on an aluminum beam and it gives us a chance to show the workshop attendees how well strain gauges truly uh, can work and how well they can, how, how stable they can be and how good a zero return they can have and things like that. And then in the afternoon of day one we jump into a, another uh, strain gauge installation. This one is actually a C2A series gauge which is a pre-cabled one and we install it on a composite. And that's kind of where Bruno will jump in and help us a uh, little bit with the installation side of it, but more on the testing side, because these are some one inch wide, uh, it's actually a G10 material fiberglass composite. And uh, we're going to put them in a 2,000 pound load frame and start pulling it. And this will allow us to calculate with Bruno's software, we can calculate the modulus elasticity for this composite as well as the Poisson ratio since we'll be using a two element uh, T rosette. With composite material there will sometimes uh, what we have to realize is the properties are not necessarily the same in both directions. So like aluminum on the first ex exercise you're going to do you'll see that the properties are the same and it's easy to calculate. With composite you don't have that luxury you have to look at each direction. So this example will actually allow us to do that. Cool, cool. All right, and then moving on to day two, we've got, um, we're gonna get a little bit more involved in talking about how you go about selecting strain gauges, um, defining the different materials that are used to construct the gauge and how you go about selecting it. So we get into the strain gauge construction. We also talk a fair amount about the adhesives uh, and surface preparation and how all that sort of starts to tie in together. And then we get into a little bit of instrumentation topics. We introduce you to the Wheatstone Bridge and we've got a nice example where we go over uh, the two versus three wire quarter bridge circuit and why in most applications you want to use three wire but in some applications you can use two and we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each. And then in the afternoon, we jump back to project number two, and we're going to test it using Bruno's frame in accordance with the ASTM D3039 uh, standard. Um, we'll run that test, establish the Young's modulus and Poisson ratio. Everybody in the workshop will have a chance to test their beams. 
and then uh, we'll move on to project number three which is installing a three element rosette on a thin wall pressure vessel and the reason we do this is it gives you a chance to install a three element rosette but also to evaluate the data that you get from the rosette and how do you interpret it. You know that's really what we're trying to teach you is how to how to go about interpreting data from a three element rosette. Uh, we'll install the gauge in the afternoon of day two and then moving to day three in the morning uh, that's when we'll wire it and we'll check it out. What, um, just to um, uh, help a little bit understand the 10 wall vessel if you never had to use a three element rosette, which is in a lot of cases not something that's very common unless you do a uh, very specific test like a pressure test, it will allow you to determine the principal strain direction and also determine after that principal stress direction, Correct. which is very important for composites. Um, that's where I think we, you see a progression through the class where you start with a uniaxial, uh, basically a rectangular T rosette, uh, sorry, T rosette, and then we go to a 311 rosette. Yeah. So, and that is normal through the progression when we do composite testing as well. So, cool, cool. So, um, <clears throat> day three morning will be to finish up the thin wall pressure vessel, uh, check it out. Uh, then we've got a guest speaker for a few minutes. Uh, it's Bob Watson, who's been the director of engineering, also a director over manufacturing. Uh, he's kind of serving a uh, little bit of dual roles right now. Uh, Bob, back in his days in college, spent a good bit of time working on a uh, test standard for composites testing, and he helped to develop a strain gauge. It's for this uh, test method that's called a Yoshipescu sample, and Bob helped to develop a gauge that is specifically designed for that test. The test is used to determine the shear modulus of composite materials and it uses a specimen that looks like a bow tie. Uh, it's got two notches in the middle and basically this gauge covers the gap between the two notches. Um, and once Bob gives his presentation, Bruno's going to jump in and he's going to actually show us how to do an actual test and he's going to uh, use the 2,000 pound frame along with some fixturing and run this test in accordance with ASTM D5379. Um, once we finish up that, then in the afternoon we're going to jump back into some more instrumentation topics. We're going to talk a little bit more about wheatstone bridges and excitation levels, which is a very common issue on composites because they're not very good conductors of heat. You have to watch that. And then we'll start project number four, uh, which is going to be a differential beam. It's actually a half bridge circuit using two gauges. And uh, we'll show you basically how to build a small, uh, kind of like a homegrown uh, force transducer. Uh, or like a little, you can consider it sort of like a little weighing scale. <clears throat> Once we go through that, then we'll kind of pick back up with some lead wire selection and protective coatings. And that will round out the day. And then moving on to day four, we've got more Wheatstone Bridge, half full bridge circuits. Uh, then we're going to jump into shunt calibration and how to properly calibrate the circuit. Um, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about uh, noise control and proper shielding and grounding uh, in the morning. And then in the afternoon of day four, we'll pick back up with project number four. It's uh, wiring the differential beam. And then we'll uh, finish that out and check it out. Uh, one of the cool things about this differential beam is that it will be load position independent. And you'll be able to see that. And then we'll work our way to project number five, which is going to be uh, gauge installation on a printed plastic beam. Our friends at Futech have agreed to provide these printed beams for us. So we're going to install a, um, a pre-cabled strain gauge onto that and we'll install it on the afternoon of day four and then day five in the morning uh, we're going to check it out again using um, Bruno's uh, test equipment the 2,000 pound test frame and I like to pull these to failure I think it's kind of cool to watch them break um, <clears throat> in addition to that Bruno's got another example set up. It's uh, in accordance with ASTM D695. It's a compression test. Uh, he's going to run that for us so we can see a typical example of that. 
And then we're also going to spend a few minutes on photo stress and then we've got some hands-on exercises and usually we find these hands-on exercises will end up uh, working their way through the morning and into the afternoon and then we'll have some time uh, in the afternoon after lunch to kind of finish these hands-on exercises up. They'll be set up throughout the training center and then um, <clears throat> after that it's really specific time for questions and answers. Bruno will be available uh, to answer anything specifically related to composites or strain gauge testing really in general and uh, the rest of the field design engineers will be available as well. We've got a lot of experience between us and we'd be happy to answer questions. So Bruno, anything you want to add to all that? Um, well, the one thing that's important, Daryl, I think with this class for a beginner, intermediate, or advanced person that's been doing composite testing is we cover the tension, compression, and shear mode of testing, which is kind of important. These are the three primary modes that you'll test composite materials, and also the fact that we use the different type of gauges, uniaxial, T-rosettes, three-element rosette, and we actually can actually perform the test and show them what it actually does. Composite materials are different than most materials, and they have a variety of properties depending on what the fibers are, the orientation. So I believe this is probably one of the few class, if not the only class, that combine composite, strain gauging, and the application part of it. So um, also during the class, we have the opportunity to um, review some of the actual ASTM standards with the type of gauges that would probably be better suited for those standards. So, and we'll probably be able to share that with the attendees. Um, the important part is, I think for this class, is a fairly small class for uh, all intensive purposes. So you have the best possible resource and you got time to ask questions. Usually the presenter stays on a little bit longer than the class and you can ask all your specific questions. Um, I had the opportunity to do that class three or four times already. Um, it's a good interactive class. This is not a very typical class where the students sit, don't do a whole lot, and beside listening and taking notes, it's very interactive. So I believe it's a really good class for any composite or plastic engineers, laboratories, or anybody that's really interested in those materials. Cool. All right. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, if Anyone listening to this video, if you would like to find out more about the class, take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com. Go to resources and go down to, actually you don't go to resources, you go to training and then you'll see the schedule for the training. Uh, you could also pick up the phone and call us, 919-365-3800. Uh, and if you press 2, that will drop you into app, uh, Applications Engineering. And we'd be glad to answer any questions for you related to the workshop. Thank you, Bruno. appreciate you taking the time. Right, thank you.